This video is going to show you a solo flawless legend whisper run on a hunter. For those that just want to see that and skip to the timestamps. Just remember, just to remind people, make sure you hit subscribe for those that haven't. So, the aim of this video was to do a hunter run of course, but uh, to open your eyes a little bit and use something that you won't see every day. But it's still damn effective and it's by no means off meta per se. So, there's going to be multiple variants of one build. We're using one build but multiple variants of it. So I want you to pay attention to, to, to build one, two, seven, eight. They're all the same in terms of aspects and fragments, etc. So it's Arc Staff, Gambler's Dodge, Combination Blow, Pulse Grenade, Aspects of Flow State, Lethal Current, Spark of Resistance, Spark of Ions, Feedback, Shock. Right, that's always going to be the same. But sometimes we're going to use Assassin's Cowl build with Thunderlord. We're then sometimes going to swap to Radom Flux with also Thunderlord. Right? Uh, when we get to the boss fight, just to know as well, the weapon-wise, a one-two punch shotgun and a hand cannon doesn't really matter what you use in the energy slot, from what I've found. When we get to the boss fight, we're going to use everything the same, still Assassin's Call, but we're going to swap out Thunderlord for Anarchy. And then when we get to DPS situations, we're going to go to Raid and Flux, still Anarchy, uh, etc. I'm not going to go through all the mods because there'll be dim links. Alright, so you, you're not going to need me to go through it all. But uh, that was the setups that we were using. So as we start the mission, we have loaded with triple arc reserves on our chest plate. That is the only minor difference with our build. So I just made a separate chest plate with triple arc reserves. This means that I can load in the mission with 409 Thunderlord shots. If I don't do this, I'll only get 296. So... A top tip for you, loading the mission with a triple reserve of what element of gun that you're wanting it for, for example, galley or whatever it might be, and you'll get more. You can then swap off the triple reserve plate to your resistance plate at a later time when you're fighting adds. That's a little tip for you. So for hunters, we are using stompies as a movement tool for the jumping part. We're not going to well skate, uh, we're not going to shatter skate, sorry, or anything like that. We're just going to do our normal jumps obviously this is a, this is a predominantly arc run so this is what the, this is what this run is about um not too difficult probably i think the hunt is the worst for the jumping part if you like if we take away the uh, skating that you can do the warlock and the titan for me are far superior to the hunter for doing your jumps um, Stompies helps out massively for making longer range jumps and stuff, so I do recommend you put them on. Equipment locked isn't a thing. By the way, the fret mods do rotate daily. Today is solar. The first reset was void. Uh, so I guess it'll be arc. I guess it's going to be arc at some point. Maybe to do, after today's reset. It's going to go solar void arc on a daily reset. Just to let you know, that makes a little bit of a difference with snipers because it's solar fret. That's what I found to be the case. So it's self-explanatory, okay, with the jumps. Uh, just be aware of these traps. Go out and in with that jump because you can get booped off and obviously lose your flawless. It doesn't matter if you don't, if you don't flawless though because the stakes aren't that high unless you're really uh, bothered about that triumph, which is, I think it's five points. You get five points for, for the uh, so far as time. So, um, anyways, with the hunter jump, we're going to jump right across. Space out those jumps if you're going to do it like this, though. It really does struggle, but uh, be careful. We're going to wait here for a second. We'll get sniped in the back. Notice how much damage that sniper does. Um, again, that's because of solar fret. But. There's, yeah, I think Soul Fret is the best, worst resistance, uh, worst fret to have on this. Probably the best resistance is Void Fret. Because those orbs, you can control those orbs that the Centurions fire. Arc Fret's a bit of a nightmare for Scions. So I think overall Void Fret's the easiest ver variant of this of this mission. When we come to the green room, obviously you come in this little uh, location here. You need to duck. And go in, slide in if you want. We're halfway to a super, so 
Uh, we're not going to use a super though till the second room. So that doesn't matter either way. Supers are more important at the boss fight. Uh, definitely. But getting to the boss fight, not, not too much of a problem. You're going to want to spam basically shotty, your build, your punch dodge build, and a bit of funnel odd. Um, that's what you're going to spam. And I'll take you through all the steps. So listen closely to it because uh, this is designed for you to watch the whole thing. Uh, if you skip a part of the room then and you die and you didn't listen to the audio, that's because you didn't listen to the audio. You've got to listen, from, listen to it from start to finish. It's not even that long of a video to watch anyways. So as we start, Thunderlord the Captain down, right? We're then going to um, proc a shield on the Vandal. This stops them from sniping us. So did you see what I've done there? I procced his shield to then push up, then Thunderlord him down. We'll kill the second captain. He falls off map. That's fine, though, but our, our priority is the captain. We'll finish and kill him because we've swapped build to, obviously, Assassin's Call, as I said, then Thunderlord, the second sniper. Now you start doing ad clear. Do it in this rotation. This is the most effective way, easiest way of doing it because you haven't spawned in phase two of, of the first room and you don't want to spawn them in until you're ready. You want to pull Snade up. They're spawning in now, which is based on a portion amount of sounds killed. Get a pull Snade on that platform. It'll kill everything. Now you just punch, dodge, punch, dodge, everything. You can mix in a bit of um, Thunder Lord ammo and stuff like that, maybe shotgun. But for the most part, let your build do um, your jolting. It's going to do a lot of jolting because every time you dodge and then you punch, you add and jolt to all the enemies. So that makes short work of this room. Make sure you kill all ads because the door, the Tickness wall thing won't spawn until they're all dead. So we'll make sure that we do that. Then you're going to come to the ambush room. Which the, which, with the ambush room, you want to get a dodge because you won't have your melee. Get a dodge right away and then get your kill straight away with that melee. It will one-shot a combination blow times free. So you need to have a good upkeep of combination blow times free. On Legend, if you if you don't have any combination blow at all, it takes some enemies free melee hits to kill. This will result in a death if there's a lot of enemies surrounding. Room two, kill the knights with Thunder Lord. Right, well we're actually going to whip out a machine gun and get invis here. This will de-aggro the ads as soon as we get like an invis kill like that. The ads forget where we are. You can see this. I'll do a swap to Raiden Flux, Arx Rider, and then kill all the enemies on top. Your goal is the knights and the snipers. Get them all down. This is a good place to use a super. It saves you time, I think. No, well, not that it saves you time. It's just that it makes it easier. Uh, that's really all it's doing. We'll use the back end of our super to take down the blight. You may as well. It's not mandatory. I'm not saying it is, but you may as well. Thunderlord range drop off. Proof console. Look at this. Um, we haven't got a scout rifle on, so we're, that's why we're using front law like this. We're going to swap back to Assassin's Cowl. On the second sniper kill, the phalanx is spawned behind you. Get a pull snade on them. That's what we're saving the pull snade for. Hopefully one of them stays finishable, but that isn't the case because I would have finished him going vase and then start killing enemies. That's fine. We'll just actually push up then and get our first kill. Now we haven't got combination blow. It takes two melee... Uh, Two millies to get your first stack. Once you get your stack, just go around, punch, dodging, everything. This build, as I say, is really good for this. It's better to do it like this as well because it stops the sounds from um, multiplying as much because they don't know where you are. So their AI pattern is to shoot where you last were, right, which stops them from multiplying. Whereas if they see where you are, they'll be super aggro and they will duplicate. So kill all the rest of the enemies. There's a sniper up top still. Use Funnel Lord for that. Then Funnel Lord here. Get a reload. You want to reload before you go down there because you want. It's important you have a full mag to deal with all the enemies. You're gonna spam maybe a pulse nade and Funnel Lord for all these phalanxes. You want to take them down as quickly as you can so you have maxima You maximize your time. This what that's what this run was about was. How would somebody maximize their time so that they've got more time for the bosses? Because ultimately, this is what this is what this run's all about, is maximizing time for the bosses. 
and I feel as though this build does a good job of that. We're now going to switch to build 7 and 8. That's our anarchy setup. Everything's the same with Assassin's Carl and Raiden, just that we've now got anarchy on. We did triple arc reserve notice as well on top of that. So now this is how it, this is how you structurally do whispered. Forget about spawning all three bosses. This is not the correct way to play it. Have them replayed legend doing it like this. It makes things so much more formulated to the point where Whisper Legend is really easy. It's actually easier than what I initially thought on day one because of because of me doing it like this. So we spawn in middle boss. It's important that you spawn in this guy. This guy, he doesn't he doesn't like you and we don't like him. So we're gonna use double anarchy and super. A super from Raid and Flux, which we switched on to uh, will do massive damage. Look at this. One super just about kills him. It does. If we get the anarchy attached. That is good damage. Alright, a lot of people, I can just see it right now, but a lot of people would just use Gather and Storm. And you can, but it's a little boring, don't you think? Don't you think after, you know, 50 hours of Gather and Storm gameplay that maybe... You know, you should maybe try and do something else. See, the reason why I wanted to do Raid and Flux run is because when Whisper came out, Raid and Flux Arc Strider was the best Roman Super in the game when Whisper came out. So I was like, what's it like now in Whisper? And I can confirm to you, it's absolutely fantastic because you can farm up Supers. Because I've got hands on on and orb build, I can farm up Supers for each boss. So we're spoiling them in one at a time, and yes, this is better than doing all three. If you do all three, then you need a particular build like Polaris Lance to deal with that. We're not on Polaris Lance, we're on an arc build. So what's the best way to do it on an arc build? It's like this, because you're taking the ads in steps. Notice, right, so the, the boss that we just killed was a Taken Knight. He spawns in Solar Captains. Did you notice that the Solar Captains despawn when he died? Each enemy VIP boss has a enemy type attached to it. In this case, this knight here is wizards. So boss one was captain knights. Boss two is wizards. And boss three is scions and centurions. But what I'm saying is you can skip them if you kill the boss in time. The enemies will despawn. So if you kill this boss here, the wizards, if there was wizards alive, which they keep spawning up whilst you're fighting him, they will despawn. And I, I, I seen that day one and thought, is that, is that actually what's happening? It is. That's what happens. So you don't always have to kill every enemy. They'll despawn. Right? So wizards will despawn for this uh, boss in particular. And we can go in the cave and just anarchy him. We haven't got super, which I'm not going to use super on him when we get it anyways, because he'd be dead by then. But that's fine. So we'll super boss one. Kill boss two with anarchy. Boss three we will sue, but the centurion because the centurion. Uh, so in difficulty in terms of VIP bosses, taken night guy with the walls is the hardest, most aggressive. Um, the next hardest is the centurion because of orbs, and then the easiest guy is the solar knight, the one that we're killing now. We can completely ignore wizards if we wanted to. Look, he's dead. We killed him with anarchy alone. Anarchy's doing crazy, crazy work for us. Mid phases you get invisible minotaurs. You can kill them for super energy. So I recommend you do it and it'll you can rank up your combination blow in the meantime. So kill them. As I don't believe these do despawn. They stay alive. Spawning the final boss, which is in Centurion last. This is the absolute best rotation of bosses to do it in. I've tested doing it other ways. This is the absolute best way. Uh, because it means that you're super in the difficult ones. And you're not super in the, the Solar Knight. The Solar Knight doesn't need a super. The other two, they're more difficult. Okay, a super's more appropriate. We're not going to super right off the bat either. Right? We're going to wait a little bit. Kill some of these Centurions. Because there's three Centurions up. That's three Void Orbs. They will kill you if they all hit you. So we're going to wait. We've got Volt Shot on the Hand Cannon. I'm sorry there's not much Hand Cannon gameplay in this. The problem is that the build's that good that I didn't really need to use my Hand Cannon all that much. We messed up massively here because he backed up. I didn't expect him to do that with our Pulse Grenade. You want your Pulse Grenade hit. Can we still kill 
despite us messing up. Let's see. The combination, by the way, is R1, R1, R2. Actually, it's circle R1, R1, R2. So it's dodge, light, light, heavy. Dodge, light, light, heavy. This is the absolute best combination you can do on an Arx Rider Raiden Flux. And most of you won't know that because you just won't have played it. Especially beyond, beyond light starters. A lot of you players like haven't experienced this or don't want to because um, you're into the new flashy stuff. But the old stuff still works really well. And it, it does. This super is still fantastic. The problem is with the super is that on some bosses it doesn't work well. It doesn't work well against Hive Guardians. Um, I'm talking about Ghost of the Deep here. And I'm, I'm, I don't know why. I almost feel as though it's kind of bugged. It's not doing the damage it should against those. I don't know. But it's good for literally everything else in the game. Especially like a mission like this where you're timed where you want super uh, damage resist because that's what you'll get whilst you're in your super you, you're tanky so you're free to do damage to a boss when there's ads surrounding you uh, which otherwise you might not have been able to do there's no ads on the final boss until so we um, I think it, they start spawning now look on the radar you'll see we've got assassin's cow obviously we swap back to that so we're going to keep getting orbs we're going to farm our super whilst we are in viz we're going to do anarchy damage. So this is good. We're going to keep killing, farming up our super. Look at the super energy because we want super for phase two to melt quick. We're five minutes now um, and this is just so easy. It's unbelievably easy if you follow this formula. Don't don't make the mistake of spawning all bosses unless you're using like a Polaris Lance setup or a Strand Titan setup. That's fair play. I don't recommend that you do that on this arc build and you don't need to. You don't. It's shown you that you don't need to do it like that. Because I like things where you can actually have a routine, and this, this is shown. This is me showing you the routine for the Whisper boss fight. I know there's a triumph to spawn them all in. You can do that anytime you want, though. It's no big deal. It's just triumph points. That's all it is. I don't, I don't even do triumph points anymore. If I'm being honest, I've completely abandoned triumph scoring D2. Like I'm. I, I feel as though I have less of a stress-free... I have more of a stress-free life in D2 not thinking about Triumph score. I couldn't care less about it. So I'm not a Triumph hunter in, in, the, in the slightest. We'll do double Anarchy, Pulse Grenade, and then Super. This will kill the boss. Obviously, we swap to Raiden Flux. It's a fantastic build. It rips through Whisper. I recommend the Hunter mains. You try it. If you're fed up with Solar, this is the next best thing to have a go with. Honestly, it's fantastic. That was the sole force for this. I uh, hope you enjoy. Thank you.